What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Ray J coming at you with another Basement Boy Productions from the fifth floor. Let me tell you about this time where I stunk this audition. I mean, just terrible, like, like chicken juice or garbage truck juice. That's how I did in the audition. Let me tell you about that. But first, let's go to the throne grace. Hi, your name is Shadi. We ask you to forgive us for all our sins. Continue to cleanse us. From all of our unrighteousness, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for another day in the land of the living. Lord, just thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for just life, health, and strength, Father. As we go into this lesson, this talk, Heavenly Father, help me to talk and to speak, not with the tongues of angels, but with the tongues of men, where they can understand me and help the viewers to understand, help me speak with clarity. And as we water and plant, continue to give the increase in all things, Father. You get all the glory, all the honor, all the praise for the shares, and we pray, Amen. So, again, it's been a while. We try to get out an actual lesson uh, to you tomorrow. It's just my base, my one-on-one -on -one base lesson has been picking up. So again, if you haven't heard, I'm doing one-on-one uh, -on -one lessons. My number is 302-312-7640. Hit me up if you're trying to get a one-on-one -on -one so we can take our base experiences. I'm sorry, I'm tripping. I'm looking at, I'm looking pretty rough. So you can hit me up if you want a base lesson. But this is not what the video is about. The video is about my garbage juice, my garbage truck smelling plane. I'd had a one in this one audition and it was recently so it's not like I'm still not learning from experiences I stunk this audition up and I'm about to tell you how and why I did it or how I did it. so on Facebook there's a group called musicians need it probably most of you have heard of it if not it's basically what it says the title is musicians need it if you're looking for a musician you just put in a group, hey, looking for bass player, looking for drum player, so forth, so on. So this dude, he's uh, like an hour and a half from me. So I'm looking, church is looking for a bass player. Uh, hit me, hit me up. If you're interested, hit him up. He said it was still open. He said, I said, what are details? He said, you know, we have rehearsal, one rehearsal a week. They got two services, eight and ten. And then he said the pay was two hundred dollars. I'm like, that's that's pretty good, not bad at all. So I said, oh, okay. I said, let me talk to my wife because just as far and I got two children now. He said, listen, I understand. So we went back and forth, and then I finally uh, got a chance to call him. The next day, I talked to him, and he was telling me that his church been has been looking for a basis for maybe like two or three months, but they just couldn't find the right person. So he would just kind of just started telling me like the people he was auditioning, it was they were a lot of them. I won't say a lot, but he said a couple of them were just haughty. They had a haughty spirit, like they were arrogant and they're playing. And but when it came time for them to perform, they really didn't measure. Their playing didn't measure up to their, you know, their their arrogance. And he said. This is a key point. He said he asked them just to play. And they would play. They would choose songs that they really didn't know how to play. And on an audition, you don't want to do that. In an audition, if someone asks you to play, choose a song that you know, like the front and the, and the back of your hand. So he said some players would say, well, what type of song do y'all sing at your church? And he said, you know, for the first couple of them, he would tell them, like, well, do you know this song? And they would start to play it, and then they would fumble. So he just told me how, you know, the whole situation and the whole process was a little strenuous. And he was like, you know, man, I just, you know, just by talking, y'all wish that, you know, I could just lock you down right now. So I got to talk to the pastor and wait. Kind of, I won't say souping my head up, but making me think, okay, I don't got to audition. Because added to that, I said, you know, I got a bass lesson. He said he did see some of my bass lessons. So he said, send me some of your videos. So I sent them like five. I sent them like five or seven of them. 
Okay, so like a, two days went by. And I said, hey, what's going on? He said, okay. He said, oh, will you be able to audition? Or just, you know, just have a, have a list, a list of songs and that you could just play just so I could tell the pastor that he checked out, he you know, all the T's or cross, all the I's are dotted. I said, sure, sure. So, but to go back in conversation, he told me that his church, he plays a lot of the contemporary stuff. So I said, I was like, oh, okay, okay. Now, this is where, this was the beginning of my screw up. I picked about, about four songs. I think the songs I did, I did a, a hymn, like Pass Me Not. I did, I love to praise them. Like the funk way, the way I taught it. And I did, I did, uh, and two other songs that were not up to date. So that's the first garbage trash truck smell that I did. I didn't listen. I didn't follow directions. And I work at a school, and I'm always telling kids the importance of following directions. And here I am. I didn't follow directions. He said, all the songs that his church sings, they're kind of like up to date. So I did. I was going to do like, you get the glory. I mean, not the glory. You deserve it by you for praise. But I was like, that's too slow. So I'm thinking, you know, getting in my mind. But yeah, yeah, you know, I'm going to do them in good. I'm going to do one song in F. I'm going to do another song in F sharp. Another song in G, and I'm in an A flat. But it didn't go as I planned. So he said, okay, well, yeah, I know that. Do you got any more? And after the four songs, I said, he said, well, can you know any more up-to-date songs? And at this point, because I wasn't expecting that, and this was really my first time having to audition like this on the spot, or my really audition where you don't know what the person what can ask you to sing or play. Like I had an audition for a secular gig for like a wedding band. They gave me the list that we will audition on. And I didn't, I didn't get that either because <clears throat> they like the, the popping, like literally every song for that pop thing, like every, they wanted to, you to slap and pop. Like you remember the Pharrell song, happy. They wanted like slap bass and the Justin Timberlake joined Jay-Z I can't get in love. It's all right. As long as I got my suit and tie, they wanted you to pop it. So I was like, you know, I don't, in case you, you didn't know, I don't do a lot of lessons on slapping and popping because that's not my strong suit. And I don't want to show you and have you offset. Then y'all being mad at me like, well, Ray J showed me this, but it's crap. So I didn't, I don't do that. So that's probably why I didn't get that gig. But for this one, I didn't know after my four songs, my mom went blank. And I, I don't want to say I got nervous. But he was saying, well, do you know? Okay, that's good. Do you know any other song? So I did Anita Wilson, Jesus. Well, he said, okay, now listen, I just want to hear you. So just do what you got to do. And in my mind, I'm thinking, is he saying go for broke? Because I think he's saying go for broke. And I don't, why would he tell me to go for broke? on an audition when I won't go for broke during, like, you know, the live set, because that'd be too much. So he's really telling me, go for broke, because I want to hear you, how you approach it. What did I do? I didn't go for broke. I played it safe. Oh, yeah, I did the uh, William Murphy joint, Spirit Breakout. That's the one I did uh, in G. And the uh, last song was, like, what's his name? And I had other songs to do but like I said after I got past those four that I thought would be enough that's kind of when my mind got blank and it was to the point I was like he said um you then I said well what kind of song do y'all sing and he was like he said yeah remember I said don't do that because before I auditioned I talked to him and he said the other bass players when they got into the similar struggle as I did they asked him Hey, well, what song do y'all sing at your church? He said, I don't like that. So I he told me exactly what not to do. And once again, I didn't follow direction. Because it was like, at that point, it was I'm trying to save as much as I can. I want to salvage something. Save it before, 
you know, I blow this opportunity. So he started and then he started naming songs. I'm like, I don't listen to contemporary gospel music. Like, I don't know if it's me or if other musicians like this, but if you don't really got to learn the song, most of us listen to what we want to listen to and not so much top 40, top 20, unless you're in that field where you have to know a lot of the contemporary songs. Because for me, I'm only going to listen to the song if I have to learn it. Not that I don't want to listen to it, but you you know, your CDs are what you want to listen to. And, then, and if a song gets played that you already know, that's even better. But most of the songs, I don't listen to it. So he's naming songs. I'm like, what? And my wife was sitting there. I said, I said, you, what's, what song? And she was like, don't do that because it's going to make you look even worse or, or make you look bad. So I said, uh, no. So he started naming songs. And then, like I said, we did uh, Jesus Will. And he said, again, I just want you to, I just want to hear you. He was basically saying, go for broke. Show me that. <clears throat> You are a master at your craft. And I didn't do that. I just played it safe. So, you know, I said, he said, well, okay. Well, give me, he said, well, give me some time and I'm going to uh, get back with you. So, at this point, I was like, yo, that was terrible. Even though I played the song that I played, I didn't follow instructions. He said his church plays contemporary music. The all the up to date gospel song, and afterwards I was like, wait a minute, dang! I knew Travis Green International. That's still up to date. It's not like recent his recent song, but you would say it's up to date because I was playing hymns. Like what? What the freak is that? Like what is that? He didn't ask for a hymn. He didn't ask for eighteen seventy five. He asked for two thousand and seventeen, two thousand eighteen. I could have played Travis Green International. <laughs> Or he had his new song, like Mom Made Up or something. Or I could have played uh, You Made Away. Could have did a J.J. Harrison, You Deserved It, or No Fear. But even within that, he said, I just want to show me you. So I hit, I hit him up. Like, because two days went, went by, and I didn't hear from him. And he said, I said, hey, bro, Buckman. Okay. I said, I'm patiently waiting to hear back from you. I know you're a busy man. This was January 30th. January 31, I'm reading what he said. He said, good morning, bro, Moore. I hope you and your family are doing well. I regret, regret to form, inform you that after weeks of numerous auditions, we have made our selection for our new basis from Philly. At our church, as is yesterday, I do thank you for your time. And your patience during our selection process. You and your family be best, be blessed in all your endeavors and all that God has in store. I said, hey, thanks for consider consideration, be blessed. But then after that, I was like, wait a minute. I, it was a humbling experience, especially when you think you got the job. Then knowing you kind of messed up, but still think, yeah, well, he based off of what he said, like he really wants me. And then find out he really wants you, but you didn't perform up to the level that he wants you. So I was like, wait a minute, you know, I got, I was in, I was in lunch. I was doing lunch duty at my school. I was like, yeah, so, and this is where you can either hide from yourself or you can stand in and look at yourself in the mirror. And I chose to look at myself in the mirror. So I said, I need to ask him. Why didn't I get the cut or what was the, ter the, ter the determining factor? So I asked, I didn't want to make it. Well, why did you choose me? Nah, I'm like, well, what made you choose someone else? What didn't I do or what did they do that was better? I said, if you don't mind me asking, what was the determining factor? And he said, basic determining factors, basis, play, with fluency, and accuracy. I wasn't fluent. I wasn't accurate. Because the songs that I did, it was like, even on like Jesus Will, it was like one, when I'm in trouble, that part, 
I was hearing it one way, but he said, no, it's this way. And we try to do that. And then I, oh, yeah. I said, I know God is great, but don't you know the first line? The do, 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 that joint. I didn't play that right. And I'm like, I know this. And then he really had to show me how it was. I'm like, how am I auditioning for a gig and you're showing me how to do it? Again, I was garbage juice. Then he said, basics, knowledge, base of past slash current gospel songs were extensive. I was playing the past stuff. I didn't know the current stuff. And then he said, elevated skill set and mastery of his instrument was exhibited. And I kept that out. So your, your, your pride could come in. We're like, oh, are you saying I'm not a master? Or then the doc could come in like, wow, I'm not as good as I think I am. So I got that thought for a little bit. But then I said, wait a minute, that's not the case. I know where I stunk it up and I know where I had to grow. So even, even me not saying, you know, I'm grand or anything this, but a person who's been playing for, you know, going on 10 years, we still have, and even professionally, you still get that time of being nervous or time of a little bit of self-doubt, having your pride or not your pride, your confidence, take a hit because of rejection. But it's what you do after you get rejected. So what I did after I got rejected, I still said points well taken. Thank you. And I wasn't bitter. Like, I wouldn't have chose myself either. If you had to choose like five between five people, you're going to choose the one that plays the the music the best. No matter if you like, well, if you like their personality, because you remember I did a lesson on, you know, skill and character. And I say, your skill will get you somewhere, but your character will keep you somewhere. Well, my skill didn't get me anywhere they get me to the place where my character could shine because I didn't have the skill. So I'm a perfect example. I'm a living witness of what I, I won't say preach of, but what I talk to y'all about. Your skill will get you to a place, but the character will keep you there. I didn't show, I didn't exhibit the skill to get me to the place I wanted to go. Who am I mad at? I can't be mad at anyone but myself because I stonk it up. So what my wife said, she said, well, what you need to do is listen to these, you know, just the radio for the for the current songs. I was like, but these songs suck. That's the, you know, defense coming in. But like, I don't really need it. I need to listen to them. Don't be defensive. You humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he, that he, so he can exalt you in due season. That's what it said. I believe is that in Peter, I believe so. The first or second Peter. So what I've been doing since then is listening to the radio to see, you know, the current songs. And one current song I, I learned was uh, You Will Win by Ja'Kalen Carr because they play that all the time. That's like one of the hottest ones. And I've been listening to like uh, the Travis Green new song and certain ones like that to better prepare myself for the next opportunity. So, and look, I still got the messages right here. And he's cool. He's cool people. So I'm not mad at them all because, like I said, I wouldn't have chose me because I didn't perform to the level that I'm capable of. So, and all that, when preparing for an audition, learn from me. Listen to what the, give the person whatever he or she is asking for. Whatever the requirements are, make sure you learn it. Make sure you get it. If the person is saying, our church plays a lot of contemporary songs, just you list, if you already don't know them or you don't listen to them, all you got to do, Google top, uh, top gospel songs of 2018. That's what I did. Give me a whole list. And you play those. Especially if a person is not preparing you a list to learn from to audition if it's like a blind audition where they're leaving it to you if it's, if the person is saying we learn contemporary song we play contemporary song learn the contemporary song if the person said you know we're kind of traditional we do a lot of hymns get down your hymns that's the first thing 
And if the person is saying, you know, I just want to hear you, you just, you can ask. I should ask, I'm like, so are you saying, tell me to go for broke? What are you saying? Just so we have an understanding. Because I thought I knew what he meant and I still played the same. So that's the second thing. Ask clarifying questions. Because you think, if you, you got to think like, it's between me and other people. So you got to put your best foot forward in order to get the the audition and in, in order to get the job. That's just what you got to do. I didn't do it. So you can learn from my mistake. I didn't do it. But you can learn it from my mistake. The third thing, just follow directions. That's all. I mean, whatever the person is asking for, you give them. If you don't understand, you ask questions. So you say, well, well, when you say you want to hear me, do you want me to show you my theoretical approach, like to every progression, like what I'm thinking? Like, how do you want it? Like, I don't want to be tense in this, this setting. And even in, in audition, you can feel a little tense because it's, you know you're not only are you playing in front of someone, but you're playing in front of someone for a grade. And certain people perform well under pressure or under you know, it's basically, it was a test. Some people are good test takers, other people are not. But if you have to audition for a job, for like a, a base job, you're going to be able, you, it's mandatory. It's a requirement that you perform well under that audition. There's no, uh, there's no, nothing around it. And that means learning the song until you can play it the same tempo without the track because I didn't play to a track. He just heard it and he was keeping the time. My, even my time was off. Like when I tell you it was terrible, it was terrible. But fast forward to uh, even tonight, I want to say I auditioned for another church that's actually closer. It's like five minutes from my house. I want to say I was there like three weeks ago. I had to do send me the song list. The drummer sent me the song list. Like two of the songs I didn't even know. I was like, what is this? But the other songs I did know. So the, the songs I didn't know, because I was able to follow him. I was able to follow him because of knowing like progressions and knowing notes and also he transposed, so I was able to follow his hand. Talk to the past, say, hey, this is what I want. And he texted me tonight, said, you know, the churches are going to offer you, you know, uh, this. It's $100. I wasn't making anything. So I said, of course, I humbly accept. So that was an audition of success. You know, have fun with the band. So I had an audition of a failure. I was able to regroup. And now I got an even better one to me. Because, like I said, I got two children and a wife. Taking $200 to go like an hour and a half each way. Not counting the time in church. I would get home, you know, really not be able to spend time with my family. And family, to me, trumps everything. So, I could take, you know, half, half of what I was getting there. But I don't have to drive. I don't have to worry about toll. I don't have to worry about gas. And there's only one service at 11. But that church, it was uh, 8 and 10. So I probably wouldn't get home until about 3. So I'm getting, but I would have to leave here around like 6 in the morning. I don't got to wake up until about 9.45. No, scratch I don't wake up until when my children wake up. My oldest son wakes up. So in, look, in looking back at it, Sometimes it, it is good. I won't say it's good, but it was for me, it was a good thing that the second opportunity presented itself. And it was also a good thing that I failed the first one because I learned a lot from it. And from my learnings, I know I can help y'all as well. So I didn't fail on purpose to try to teach a lesson. No, I just stunk it up. But in the midst of that, you know, just how God opened doors. It really happens. Delight yourself in the Lord. He shall give you the desires of your heart. Your gifts will make way from you, for you and 
present you in Kings and Queens. That's in Proverbs. It's uh, Proverbs 18. Actually, let me get it real quick. Because I don't want to paraphrase the wrong thing. So, let me get that, Joe. It's in Proverbs. I know that. So, my thing is, looking back at it, I'm gl I won't say I'm glad I failed, but it was it turned for my favor that I failed because I'm playing closer to home around the corner. I don't have to wake up early. I, I'm be home probably earlier than I would going to Jersey, and the money thing always works itself out. So Proverbs eighteen sixteen: A man's gift maketh room for him, and bringeth him, and bringeth him before great men a man's gift so even though my gift in one sense well it wasn't even my gift it was me it was, i'm going to say it was my gift it was my preparation my gift couldn't even be in it had my gift couldn't have you no know, my gift they even had an opportunity to be on show make room for me because i sucked it up not listening so i'm not even gonna say that so what i'm gonna say God opens doors. When one door closes, when we adjust and do what we have to do, another one opens. And then that favor meets you there. So the favor comes first, and then you come. Then it's all well. It's just you got to meet the favor there. You can't just have favor just sitting chilling. You know what I mean? And you're not doing what you have to do. So if anything else, when you're auditioning, Whatever the person requests, whatever the person asks, you do that. If you don't understand anything, ask clarifying questions. Learn the music verbatimly. And if the person wants you to go for, for broke, just go for broke. It's better for you to go for broke because the person asked you and you not make it versus you not to go for the broke. And the person asks you, and you don't make it. Because you can say, Dad, I should have listened. So you just do that. So that is the end. I only thought it was going to be 15 minutes, but it was a lot longer. So if y'all have any questions, comments, or concerns, y'all can hit me up. As always, love y'all. Hit the base and learn from my mistakes. All right, peace.